As we continue our Rare Disease Day special, we're going behind the mystery of pheochromocytoma and paragangleoma, better known as pheo and para. They are rare neuroendocrine tumors that can dramatically impact survival in people of all ages. Take a look. Every year in the U.S., fewer than eight out of every million people are diagnosed with a pheo or para tumor. As many as 130,000 people are living with this disease in the U.S., but that number might be much higher because the disease is likely underdiagnosed. This is a serious problem. If pheo and para tumors are not diagnosed and appropriately treated, the disease will likely be fatal. I would feel like I was having a panic attack. Honestly, the only way I could describe it. Um, at first, I just thought it was anxiety, and then it started to get to the point where it was literally making it so I couldn't stand up. I think I first started noticing symptoms when I was about 33. It really started with the tremors and sweating and um, heart palpitations, and then the blood pressure and the, and the pounding headache would, would kind of be the last thing that would happen. You know, that would happen pretty much daily. The Balancing Act traveled to the University of Iowa Carver College of Medicine to speak with endocrinologist Dr. Joseph Dillon. He explains how the neuroendocrine system, which is made up of special cells called neuroendocrine cells, are found in almost every organ of the body. Neuroendocrine cells make hormones which control many functions in the body. While pheotumors form in the adrenal glands on top of the kidneys, paratumors form outside the adrenal glands on both sides of the spinal cord. The unique feature about neuroendocrine tumors in general and pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas in particular is the hormones that they make, adrenaline, also called epinephrine, or noradrenaline, also called norepinephrine. They can produce these at huge excessive levels. And when they produce them at the excessive levels, the hormones get in the bloodstream and the hormones cause a variety of symptoms. Pheo and para are caused by an inherited genetic mutation more than any other cancer and can affect both men and women and people of all ages. While most people are in their 40s to 50s when they're diagnosed, the disease can affect children and the elderly. With a rare tumor like this, and with a tumor that has very unusual presentation. Most often, patients take a long time to get diagnosed correctly with these tumors. There are over a hundred different signs and symptoms associated with pheo and para. Symptoms can come and go without warning, and not every patient will have every symptom. A common experience for patients is a pheo attack, an onslaught of symptoms that can be sudden, intense, and debilitating. A few chromocytomas and paragangliomas produce those fight or flight symptoms. The classical symptoms, blood pressure is very high. Palpitations, headache, sweating, shaking, going pale, and we have to work on sort of parallel tracks to treat both the tumor itself and to treat the uh, symptoms independently. The diagnosis journey for patients is not easy and is often drawn out. The average time from when symptoms begin to a final diagnosis is three years, with 25% of pheo or para cases discovered while looking for an unrelated disorder. For Dave, multiple trips to the ER and being misdiagnosed with diabetes led him to investigate his symptoms even further. I felt like they were thinking that I had an anxiety problem. Kind of led me to believe that I needed to dig a little deeper. During his fourth trip to the ER, Dave was transferred to the Indiana Heart Hospital with fears he was having a heart attack or stroke. After multiple tests and seeing a slew of doctors, Dave's illness finally got diagnosed. And that's when I met a doctor there that uh, had done some, some research on the disease, and he's the one that diagnosed me with pheochromocytoma. They showed me pictures of a tumor on my adrenal gland. That was when they started talking to me about the disease. If you don't know what's wrong with you, it's almost worse than being sick itself. For me, I just needed to know what it was. Pheo and paratumors are difficult to diagnose because they're so rare, so they're often unsuspected, and the symptoms can mimic other more common conditions. 
So the testing for these tumors is fairly well worked out. There's very straightforward blood and urine tests. The next step is then looking for where the pheochromocytoma or paraganglioma is located. Probably the most well-used nuclear medicine scan is a scan called an MIBG scan. The characteristic thing about MIBG is that these pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas have a unique ability to, to suck up the MIBG from the bloodstream. Because MIBG is a radioactive substance, it will be seen on the screen and it will localize the tumor. On Christmas Eve, Dave had an emergency resection of his right adrenal gland one week after his diagnosis. I recovered fast and I was 100% fine after that. I had no more symptoms uh, at all of the disease. And um, I did a follow-up, I think three or four months later with the endocrinologist in Indiana. And he told me I was cured. I never did follow up with it. I felt perfectly healthy um, until it started to come back. And when it started to come back, I knew what it was. At the time of diagnosis, 15% of tumors have already begun to spread and are considered metastatic. And an additional 16% of apparently benign tumors return after being surgically removed. About a third of patients have, have malignant uh, pheochromocytoma or paraganglioma and thus uh, will you know, eventually have, have metastatic disease. There's nothing that the pathologist can truly tell you that that says this is benign, this is malignant. If surgery is not possible for metastatic or malignant patients, there are other ways to treat pheo and para. The non-surgical therapies are therapies that will hope to and aim to control the disease. Chemotherapy treatments have been used for specific tumors in specific sites. Radiation therapy or external beam radiation therapy is used. One of the new, I think, breakthroughs in, in treatment for pheochromocytomas is radioactivity medication. They are not curative. Six years after his surgery, Dave's symptoms started to return. While they came on slowly at first, they progressively got worse and became unmanageable again. His family doctor was unfamiliar with his symptoms and referred him to see an endocrinologist. I um, live in a really rural part of Michigan. There was only, I think, two endocrinologists in our area for me to see. After multiple tests and months of waiting, Dave received the devastating news. They discovered that now I not only had one tumor, I had four, and that it had metastasized uh, to other places. Surgeons didn't feel like they could do a successful resection on me because of the location of the tumors. There is a, a real importance for a long-term follow-up because these things can recur. A patient should expect to see multiple different specialists, which consists of this, a surgeon, uh, endocrinologist, medical oncologist, uh, maybe nuclear medicine doctor, radiation oncologist, uh, who will decide what's the next best thing for, for this patient. With a condition that has symptoms which are as, as broad or sometimes as as vague as pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, it's truly important for the patient to be their own best advocate. It's very important to have patient advocacy groups that will uh, try and uh, get exposure for the importance of pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma patients and what they, what they deal with. Like many rare disease patients, Dave is managing his symptoms while also trying to find answers on how to live with this disease. You have to keep fighting towards the, you know, the outcome, which is getting a diagnosis from somebody. So if you can't, you know, if you can't seem to convince one doctor, you just have to go to another doctor. If there is an awareness, there will be no progress. For more information about pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma, visit nofeopara.health, netrf.org, or pheopara.org. You can also visit our website, thebalancingact.com. <laughs>